Okay, welcome to another video of Equine Photo School. Today we're going to talk about camera support equipment. We want to talk about camera shake materials, uses, heads, and some tips. So we got a lot of stuff on the agenda today. Going to talk kind of fast, but uh, if you have any questions, you know, drop them down below in the comments. Reach out to me on social media, whatever it takes. Ask away. I'm here to help you. That's why we're doing this whole thing. Now, you'll see a bunch of different, <clears throat> different camera equipment. I've got some over here, got a camera here. Let's get into it right now. So the first thing is, let's talk about camera shake. What happens if you don't use support gear? If you're shooting pictures, you are moving a little bit as you shoot. If you put it up to your eye, that will help. If you tuck in your elbows, that will help. If you kind of brace with your lower body, get a stance, you know, kind of shoulder width apart and that sort of thing, you can support this camera. And if you shoot with a fast enough shutter speed, we're gonna talk about something called the reciprocal rule. So let's put that on the board here. A reciprocal, if you remember math class back in the day, um, a reciprocal is a number that you put a one over. So you take one and put it over any number and that's your reciprocal. So the reciprocal of five is one fifth, one over five. So if you're shooting, say for example, you're on this lens here, this is a 105 millimeter lens. So we'll just, let's call it 100 millimeters. You're shooting at 100 millimeters, your reciprocal of that is one one hundredth, and you just take this. So you got one one hundredth, and then we're gonna put a TH there and call that one hundredth of a second of a second. And that becomes your shutter speed. So your shutter speed becomes one over the number. That's a fraction of a second here. So the basic rule of thumb, the reciprocal rule of thumb, is that if you're shooting on 100 millimeters, 20 millimeters, whatever it is, just put a one over your focal length, and that becomes your shutter speed, and then you should be able to hand hold it. So if I'm shooting at a one hundredth of a second, or a two hundredth of a second, or a thousandth of a second, or an eight thousandth of a second, I should be able to, in theory, hand hold this thing if all things go correctly. Now, there's lenses that have built-in image stabilization, and there's camera bodies have in-body stabilization for image stabilization, so they'll help with your camera shake. So if you're going below that reciprocal rule, if you're shooting at one fiftieth of a second on a 100 millimeter lens, then you wanna have that image stabilization turned on on your lens or your body or both, or you wanna have some kind of support equipment. So maybe you put it on a tripod, you know, or you put it on a, you know, gimbal head like this here. Now these are really nice, and that reciprocal rule is kind of just a, a rule of thumb. You know, it's not hard and fast. It doesn't say like this at this point. It depends on how shaky you are. I've seen people hand hold way less than that and be good and have sharp images and that's great. I've seen, you know, where image stabilization helps a ton. So if you're getting way down there, you know, you, and that's all you've got, switch it on, brace yourself, try to be steady, but that camera shake can ruin some pictures and that's not something that you can fix in Photoshop, except I did see yesterday, I read a news article where Photoshop is, Adobe is, creating the option to maybe, maybe in the near future, we'll have some kind of a fix for that. But for right now, let's just say camera shake destroys your images for the sake of argument, and, uh, and we're gonna try to eliminate that. So there's a lot of ways that you can eliminate that, and there's a lot of things you can do to mount your cameras into a stable platform like this, or a big tripod like this. And let's talk about those next. So let's talk about We've got tripods. We've got a lot of different options and not just a tripod. But for example, let's put on here tripods. Now those can be made out of a couple of different materials. We usually are gonna see aluminum and, and we're gonna see uh, carbon fiber. So carbon fiber. Now, Aluminum ones are great. They're very stable. This one's aluminum here. The one I'm shooting on over here is a carbon fiber unit. The aluminum ones are gonna be a lot less money. They're your budget kind of option. They are very sturdy. 
and they're kind of heavy. But the other problem is, is that they will transmit little vibrations. So if you got, if you're on a, you know, if you're jumping up and down or you're dancing around or whatever and you're doing a long exposure, maybe these aren't the ticket. That's where carbon fibers are really handy. A lot of people think, oh, it's just because it's lighter. Well, yes, it's lighter. It's every bit as stable, but you save a lot of weight, but you spend a lot of money. But the nice thing, what's really cool about carbon fiber tripods is they do not transmit vibrations. And not a lot of people talk about that, but if you're out doing a long exposure kind of photo, you know, maybe you're into astrophotography or something else where you're doing a long exposure and you want, you know, you're doing a second or more or whatever, and the ground's kind of, you know, rumbling next to you. Maybe you're, by, maybe you're, you know, jumping around or whatever you're moving. That little bit of vibration isn't going to transmit to your camera using a carbon fiber tripod. Now, that's cool, but they do cost probably twice as much in most cases as the aluminum ones if you get a good quality one. Now, there's a lot more options other than just tripods. Um, you have different... Well, let's stick with tripods. You've got different shapes and sizes of tripods. These are technically still tripods. Even this little tiny guy here, three legs, makes it a tripod. Pretty cool. This is what I shoot with for an arena shot. You know, we're going to be shooting. This is on a gimbal head, and we'll talk about heads here in a minute. But this is loose. This lets you pan sideways, left, right, up, down. Super nice. This is a great tool for doing that. Um, this is on an aluminum tripod. You see it has a center column here that will raise up even higher. I can get this guy up here. And they make taller ones, smaller ones, compact ones for traveling, all kinds of things. These all break down into small little things. You know, this leg right here is probably the smallest that it gets and a little bit past for the rest two legs. But you can break this whole thing down into a very small package, which is nice. And this is you know, this is rock solid right here. It's really, you know, hard to, to move it. And if it's just shooting there, sitting there shooting pictures on it, it's going to be great all day. It's going to support the weight of this big lens and this big camera body. That's a lot of weight right there that's off of you and off your shoulders. So it's really nice. There's a lot of uses for tripods. Now you'll see back to these little ones here on the table. These ones essentially kind of do the same job. They're both small and whatever, but this one here folds in really nicely like this, magnets together, and now you can put a camera on here and you can vlog with it that way. If you're gonna do a quick video or something, you can make that and then it packs up really nicely and just sticks in your backpack or in your luggage for traveling. It's a handy little tool. And that's really nice for that. This is similar. A lot of people will grab these legs and bend them and fold them into kind of a vlogging rig. But what happens is you got to bend them back to make it stable. And these, this is like a gorilla pod. These are, these guys invented this little thing and these, they're different. They can be used similarly. But what's nice about these is they will wrap around a subject. So say you got a big tree here or something and you want to mount a camera to it or the fence in the, at an arena or something, these will wrap around it. You'll see I've got these little red whips on here, these little bungees, because what I will do is I have another, I don't use it on this one quite so much because it's big and bulky, but for my phone, I take and mount a little phone clippy on here to mount my phone camera or my phone. And then I just wrap it around these legs here on this tripod and then I have my phone while I'm working. My phone can be right here where I can access it really nicely. And it's really handy to just have right there. <clears throat> now the way to mount your phone or a camera or anything to a tripod, you're going to need a couple of things in most cases. You could mount this directly. You see there's a little quarter 20 screw on here. And on the bottom of your camera, there's a quarter 20 screw there. But for speed and efficiency and just overall more usefulness, if you just take and mount it directly to the tripod there, you're going to have uh, a camera that's just locked in one spot, one direction, and then you're going to have to use your legs to level it. If you take something like a ball head, this is a fairly large one. This is a little bitty one here. Um, but these, 
the bigger ones are going to hold more weight. This ball head or this gimbal head can act as a mount between the tripod and your camera. And then I use these little Arca Swiss plates. These are just a quick connect plate. You just use this little thumb screw to unscrew it and then you can pop it in there really quick and easy, lock it down and then it's in there, it's solid, it's not going anywhere and you just use the quarter 20 on this to mount to your lens or to your camera body. Some, um, some lenses, like this lens here, is mounted to that and the camera body hangs off the end of the lens. Uh, that's because if you put that big lens sticking off and you mount it right on the bottom of this camera, that mount would break eventually and you'd destroy that camera, potentially the lens too, and you'd have a lot of problems. So don't do that when you have big heavy lenses. Use the lens mount, that'll be very helpful. You can take these ball heads, and this ball head actually came off of this. This little Joby ball head goes on there, but they're interchangeable. Everything takes this quarter 20. When you get up to this bigger stuff, it takes a 3816 uh, thread on the bottom of this. And these can hold bigger gear. I wouldn't put this big lens and this big camera on this little tripod here. This kind of setup is great for this mirrorless body here. Like we talked about in the other video, having a mirrorless camera or a compact camera is really nice for this kind of thing where it's light, you're running gun, you're moving around a lot, and you need to vlog with it, for example, you're holding it out here arm's length. It's nice to have something that's a little bit lighter. If you want to go ultra light and you want something that's really cool, you can use this to mount that 360 cam that I have or like a GoPro. Even a, even your little mount for your cell phone, you can use it as a selfie stick. This is pretty cool, but what's really nice that you probably can't tell is that this goes way out here to 10 foot long. This is a, this is a beast. So it goes all the way across and it just, this is, this is carbon fiber. It folds down into this nice small little wand thing. But uh, I love this. I use this all the time with 360 cam makes it look like I have drone footage. It eliminates the tripod and the stitching. It's really cool, or the, not tripod, the basically monopod, a stick. What I, what I don't have here is a monopod, and that's kind of your in-between. It acts kind of like this, where it's just one stick, and you can mount a camera on there, but you always have to hold it. It's not gonna just balance itself. It's not gonna stay upright by itself, but it's a little bit more stable than you holding it yourself and it's not as stable as a tripod. So it's kind of that in between. Um, I have one, I should have brought it up here for you guys, but I just don't use it all that much. I don't find it that it's useful for me personally. You guys might love it. If you're kind of a run and gun photographer and you're using a big lens, say you wanna do a lot of moving yourself around to different places frequently, using that monopod is the ticket. If you're just gonna run out in the arena and drop to a knee or something, or you wanna stand and you know, you're shooting from the sidelines or whatever, you're shooting with big glass, and you're moving frequently, then grab a monopod and stick it on that. That will help you be much more stable than hand holding, and you'll be able to go for a longer period of time. This guy is great. I can shoot with this 20 hours a day, 24 hours a day. I've done, you know, multi-day shoots where we don't stop to sleep uh, for a couple of days, and we're just shooting nonstop. Having this big rig on here, I'll have a little transmitter for my strobes and I've got a camera, you know, a mount like this for my phone and I can shoot like that, no problem just sitting down all the time. I can sit like that for days and days straight. I've done it lots of times and uh, those big events make it worth it. So you've got those kind of things. One thing I haven't talked about yet here today is this little angle bracket here. You'll mount it on your camera like the regular Arca Swiss plate. It'll be, that's the same that way, but it has this other Arca Swiss plate on the side. So you would mount it on your camera like this, and then you can, once you get your ball head level, everything's perfect, then you can just switch it. So let's take here, you got your ball head and everything's exactly how you want it, and you're shooting horizontal, you can just pop it off and then shoot vertical, same frame, same, composition, same everything, boom, you're just right there that fast. Instead of having to grab this 
and undo it and loosen it, turn it on its side, and then try to adjust and make it all work. You just pop that there and then you have this whole range of motion again. So it's really nice to have different tools for the right job depending on what you're after. If you're trying to mount different cameras or a phone, you want the right tool for that job there too. And everything, you know, everything here I've used lots of times. This is all kind of stuff that we take everywhere when we go to all these images things, when we shoot um, in arenas or whatever. You know, you just never know when you need a little tabletop tripod. It's nice to have all these different kind of options. Now, we talked about heads a little bit. We talked about the ball head, and it's kind of super useful. This one has a little, you know, bullseye level on the top of it here. Kind of works okay. It's all right. And uh, this lets you just use this one knob here, lets you loosen it, and then you have full control, full angle ability. You know, it can go in any direction, and then it can go vertical, like we talked about a minute ago. And then you've got this other knob on it here. This knob, if you loosen that, it lets you spin this on the tripod here. So it leaves it nice and it just lets you turn left and right. Now, that's that for a ball head. They're super useful. They're really great. I just don't personally think they're that great for what we do, you know, as, uh, as rodeo photographers, horse and rodeo photographers. I don't use a ball head all that often for that kind of thing. If you're going to use a monopod, then a ball head is fine to use on a monopod. I would not use this gimbal head on a monopod, but let's bring this gimbal head over here so we can see this a little better. There's our trusty gimbal head. Now when you're shooting with this, it's easy to just, you know, have your hand here for zooming, and then you've got your other hand here for controlling the camera, and you're looking through it, and you're able to track motion, whether they go left, they go right, they go up, they go down. A lot of bird photographers are using this. They're putting bigger lenses on even. They're putting their 400s, their 600s. This is my 120 to 300 millimeter Sigma lens. I've talked about this before in the section about lenses. And I put this on my 1DX body. And this is just wonderful. Now I've seen where a lot of people like kind of mess this up where they mount this too high and you're up here and it's not stable. So you want this nice and low. You want the middle of this to be approximately in the middle of your barrel. And it should balance. So you should let it go and it should always just go back to its normal resting position here as like kind of a baseline. I've seen a lot of people mess this up too where they tighten this down and they don't realize that you know, that this thing should be moving all over. They're just using it like this. And then they're, they're frustrated that it's not working. And then they'll, they'll grab this and they'll loosen the whole thing. And now, now they've got it wobbly. And I don't want to tell you, I'm not going to mention any names here, but somebody related to me has ran it for 12 hours like this, all wobbly. And as they go this way, it gets tighter. And they go this way, it gets looser. I'm like, what are you doing? You know? So I go in there and I show them you just loosen this knob here and then it free spins and nothing is getting looser or tighter. It's not threaded, you know, it's just you can go all the way around and there's never any problems and it's super smooth. Um, so make sure that you're using this tool properly. Now when you set it like that, boom, it goes like that. Now when you set a different lens on there, you need to adjust the height of this and then you adjust your front to back. And that's the beauty of these Arca Swiss plates. And these do come with a much bigger Arca Swiss plate, so you have more freedom of motion. But I found that if I put it right there, you kind of memorize the spot or you make a little mark, and it'll tell you right where to set this so that it is perfectly balanced all the time. It's a wonderful tool. The only kind of downside is that you do need to use the tripod legs or something in the middle here to balance it left, right, front, back. But all I do is I use the little electronic level that's in the camera and I look one way, make sure it's level, and then I turn 90 degrees to that and make sure it's level that way. And then I go back and make sure that it's level the first way and just keep going back and forth until both ways are perfectly level. Then you know that it's level in every direction. So you just have to level it two directions 
that are perpendicular to each other and then you know that it's level in between all of those points as well. So after, it takes a minute or two to kind of, you know, once you go plop it out in the arena to get set up, but man, it is worth it. You know, like, look at this, it's taking zero effort on my part to hold this camera perfectly right where it's at. And then it doesn't take any effort at all. Just, a bear, you know, moves so smooth and so nice. I love this thing and I could not do what I was doing without it. All right, I've removed the camera so I can demonstrate a few little tips that I like to tell everybody. When you are going to set up for the first time, you want to start out by releasing these levers. These cam locks are my preferred method, but they have ones that twist. There's two different styles there. The tripod that the camera's shooting on now is the twist kind, and I kind of hate it, but if I'm you know, just gonna set up and leave it for a long period of time, it's okay to use, but if I'm gonna be going up, down, changing different angles, and adjusting the height of these legs often, I always grab this one because it's so much nicer to use. But you just flip these open, boom, boom, one, two, extend them all the way, which is nice, and then they just push in, and that's you know fully extended. You do that with all three of them, and then you can open them up, boom, boom, and they collapse super fast. Now the, the bigger legs, the legs at the top, are going to be more stable than having the bottom ones out. So if you're only going to go one section out, make sure it's this section. And then if you need another section, then add this section. But the more, the smaller the sections, the weaker the legs are. <clears throat> and then you want to move them all the way to their out, to they're in their fully locked position. Some of these have a little button here that you can push and then you can move your leg even further out so it's more spread out and that's that's nice if you're trying to get the tripod even lower or you have some funky ground that you're trying to you know shoot on if you're in a like a river or you know a stream bed something like that and you need to put one leg up on a rock and you need to extend it out a little further you have that option to do that and then you can just bring it back down to where it normally is there. And these compact, super tight to kind of travel with. Okay, one more thing is you're gonna notice that two of these legs are kind of padded. I will often grab another pad and put around here. Some of these manufacturers make a specific pad for them, but I would just go to Ace or your local lumber yard or whatever and get some pipe insulation and slip a piece of pipe insulation over that They're split on one end. So you can just push it on you can just go through that split and go right on there and then you can take your tripod Put your camera on it even if it's a gimbal head But it works really well when you're shooting on a ball head and you can just take this camera and plop it right over your shoulder and walk away with it. So you can do that with the monopod as well. And it's handy to put everything on your shoulder so you're not having to carry it. And then with the camera on there, you can you can get it to where it balances. I do this with the, uh, uh, I have a boom for my light too, for my strobes. And so we'll do this too. If you've you know watched some of my lighting tutorials on strobes, you've probably seen where I put that over my shoulder and walk with it and it can just balance there. You know, I'd always be ready to grab it in case, you know, you stumble or something or it gets off balance somehow. You know, always be there with it, but I just wanna demonstrate no hands, I can balance it there. And uh, it, it works the same whether you have a, you know, tr a camera on there or not. I know a lot of people see me do that and they think it's ultra risky, but I know that I have checked all the connections twice <laughs> or more and they are all very sturdy and stable and I've done that a thousand times. I've gone a long distance and I'm not worried about anything happening there. So I just make sure that I'm fully locked this way, fully locked this way. This knob is locked. The whole head is on there nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. It's not gonna come off of there. Um, so there's no worries there. It's really nice to be able to have that, plop it, expand the legs all the way out, lock them in every position and then boom, you're there set up that fast to go shoot again. There's a different kind of head here than isn't shown here because we're mostly talking about photography and there's a video head that a lot of people are using and they can, you can use it for photography. It will hold your camera, you know, it does for video 
and it has a big stick that kind of comes off the end so you can do pan shots and tilt shots and different things. I'm currently letting Brenna borrow it so I don't have it here to show you guys but it's not really photography related anyway. I just think it's not really the right tool for the job. Get a ball head or better yet get a gimbal head for what we do in the arena and action. Um, I shoot on a monopod with a gimbal head if I'm going to just sit in the arena and shoot horses running around in the arena.